lot to fit in in just one hour's time, so I'm going to, to jump right to it. Um, first off, let me take care of a few housekeeping issues. I was asked to remind everybody that if you like this presentation, hopefully you'll love the next two that happen following up in the week. There's a seminar on, I'll help you find the right suppliers, and the next two seminars are on how to manage those suppliers. Also, after this presentation, there is a seminar about uh, trends in the industry that you might want to check out. Um, also, I believe you've been given a survey form. Actually, we'll read those very carefully. Um, if there are suggestions on how we can improve the presentation, please let us know. We, we try our best to, to make it better year in and year out. Um, I will give a, a brief introduction to my background, but I promise you this will not be a sales pitch. I hate it when I go to a conference and the person gets up there and just talks about their company rather than giving free information. So you're going to get a lot of behind the scenes information from me today. Um, these are the issues that I'm going to cover, and most important, I'm going to try to save at least 10 to 15 minutes at the end for question and answer. Um, we have a lot of buyers in here, large and small. We have, I've met eBay power sellers as well as uh, large retailers. So if I don't hit the right um, points for everybody or don't answer all of your questions, please feel free to raise your hand at the end. Also, if you ask a lot of questions, it makes me look good as a speaker and they'll invite me back next year. Um, so a brief background on myself. As you can tell from the accent, I'm from uh, upstate New York, grew up near the Canadian border, and I came to Asia in 93 as an exchange student, thought that I was coming over for one semester. Now I'm raising both of my chill families here. So uh, China can, can kind of uh, grab you, and, and there's a lot of opportunities. So um, I started very small. I had one employee working out of my apartment in Shenzhen, China. Um, I remember the first year we made $10,000, and I was so excited we made a profit. Now we invoice. Well, we managed about 200, 200 US dollars worth of product out of China for the following supply chains. My customers are people like yourself that are selling into those supply chain, and my team's job is to find and manage the suppliers in China. That's why I was asked here today, because every day I'm helping our international find and manage their vendors in China. Now, despite um, over 15 years in China, and growing a company from a few people to a few hundred, I don't claim to be an expert. Um, when someone tells me they're an expert on China, I just don't believe it. China is so large and changing so fast, it's almost impossible to be an expert. So I've just been around the block a lot. I've made a lot of mistakes, had more successes than failures, and I'm going to tell you about both of them so that uh, hopefully you can learn from my mistakes and avoid the common pitfalls. Okay, also I have the honor of uh, serving as a volunteer with the China Sourcing <laughs> Center. This is a nonprofit organization that has a lot of video tutorials, um, buyer education blogs, white papers. We have a monthly mailing on the status of uh, China sourcing. So the website is down in the corner and it's all free. If, if you like the presentation today and you want other videos that are similar, in the next 30 days, I think we're launching about different video tutorials on related topics to China sourcing. Okay, let's dive right into it. Um, a lot of you perhaps are, are new to China. This is your first trip to Hong Kong, to Asia. You, some of the people in the audience might be thinking, well, you know, I'm a little bit nervous. How do I deal with China? It's so foreign. I'm here to tell you, just relax. You know, I don't like to go to a seminar, especially if it's a business, China business seminar, and they spend the whole time talking about how to use chopsticks, how far do you bow, do you exchange bow or not, or how do you exchange business cards. Really, that's all fluff, because you're the buyer. The money's in your pocket. The Chinese side is worried about offending your, your culture. How are we going to communicate? What foods do they like? So actually, it's the China side that's more nervous. So you can just relax. The money's in your pocket. You're the buyer. Um, of course, understanding a little bit of the culture, having a language, it goes a long way. But Chinese are also very forgiving of mistakes. Even after spending many years to study the Chinese language, I still make mistakes in language and culture every day. Um, one that I did recently, I really wanted to impress this supplier, so, but I had a cold and I, wasn't, I was kind of feeling sick. So we were driving to the factory and I said, pull over, I'm going to run into that store and get some medicine. And the supplier didn't realize that I spoke Chinese, so they wanted to come with me and make sure everything's right. I'm like, no, no, I can handle this. So I go into the pharmacist and I say in perfect, what I wanted to say was, I'm a little bit sore, I've got a cold, can you help me? What I said in perfect Mandarin was, my body's a little bit sore, I've been having sex with cats, do you have anything to help me? And so they, they kind of looked at me and then they realized that I had switched the tones around and everybody started laughing. 
moral to the story, even after embarrassing myself like that, the supplier is still doing business with us. So don't worry if you drop a little bit of food with your chopsticks or mess up saying a, a few words. It does go a long way, but it's not a prerequisite for success. Now, I was asked to do something very difficult, which was list how buying in China is different from purchasing back home. We could probably spend hours or days talking about it, but I, I wanted to hit some of the key points, and most of them we're going to talk about in depth in today's seminar, but I wanted to give this list to you, and also, if you leave your business card in the front, um, I'll send this PDF to anybody that wants to review afterwards, so don't feel like you have to write everything down. Um, so. Some of the issues, most of the issues I will cover today, but a few points I just want to address right off the bat, where China buying in China is very different from buying back home. Uh, one is the contract and purchase order. Back home, if you're from North America or parts of Europe, you probably have a legal infrastructure that's going to um, protect you if something goes wrong. In China, the it's contract really that lays the tone, and if something goes wrong, it all comes back to the contract. So having a purchase order is so important. You wouldn't believe the number of new buyers that contact me. Mike, I saw your seminar last week. I forgot to put the purchase order. Now the supplier has um, you know, broken the contract. What do I do? You know, unless you have another order to leverage, not, there's not much you can do. So a good contract is so important. Communication, obviously. We'll talk about most of these other issues later. Lead times. You know, if you're buying something that's customized, your supplier, maybe they don't have the raw materials in-house. It could take them 30 days to get the raw materials, 30 days to produce it, 30 days to ship it around the world. So when I'm thinking lead times, I usually start at 90 days as my minimum, as a target. Um, so if, if you're thinking about getting product for the Christmas rush or you need to make it by the rainy season, you know, if it's seasonal, you have to pay attention to the lead times. Where purchasing back home, you just phone in the order and it ships the next day. So in China, lead time management is very important. Um, let's see. Intellectual property protection, we're going to talk about. Oh, I know, the last one, the last tip, I, I even put it in a box because it's so important. Um, if you only walk away from one, with one thing from today's presentation, remember that you have to be very specific about what you want to buy. If you don't clearly define that you want this pen, with Korean ink and dark blue, you will get something that isn't what you want. So even something as simple as a pen, take the time to specify exactly what you want to buy, and there is a high likelihood that the supplier will, will get it to you. Okay, now let's dive into, um, okay, there's so many suppliers out there. Where do we start? If you're sitting here, you've got an idea that you want to produce, or perhaps you have product that you want to move the production to China, where do you start? I think the first step is to ask yourself, what tier, at what tier should I be looking at? I'm talking about retail, wholesale, and factory direct. So a lot of, um, everybody says they want to go China direct. That can mean different things to different people. For example, going to a retailer in the, in the electronic district of China, in Shenzhen, for example, that, that might be retail. It's China direct, but you're dealing with a retailer in China. So what I found is it really comes down to volume. If you have a small order that's not going to interest a large uh, vendor, don't spend your time researching factories because when you knock on the door, they're not going to be interested. So maybe you should be looking at the wholesale. If your orders are really small, look at the retail. Um, as long as the pricing point and the quality is decent, it doesn't matter which level, but you will save a lot of time putting your energies um, where you will have some positive feedback. So allocate your time and resources accordingly. Most of, honestly, most of the suppliers downstairs, at least 90% of them are actual factories. They're looking high for volume them. orders. So it may be frustrating if you're a new small buyer to, to go to them, can you give, I'd like a thousand iPad cases. Uh, you know, our minimum order is 200,000. <laughs> what do you do? Well, don't try to say, next year I think I'll buy a million. And don't try to, to convince them or paint a picture because what will happen is maybe they take a chance on you, it doesn't work out, and then they're going to be very disappointed and you'll have a tough time working with them again. So what I like to say to that supplier is, hey, I know my order size is smaller. Do you have any authorized distributors or do you work with certain wholesalers where I could buy a similar product? And most of the time they'll, they'll try to point you in the right direction. They might have a cousin or something that has a smaller factory. So just because they say, the salesperson says, the MOQ is too big, don't just walk away saying, all right, this, this show is a waste. Ask a few more questions and make the most out of it. 